Welcome to the Therapy Show Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. In each episode, I interview a seasoned and knowledgeable talk therapist from the counseling world to glean valuable insights, techniques, and tools that you can apply to your practice and your life. And if you're considering a career in the counseling field or just want to hear about what it's like to be a talk therapist, then this is the podcast for you. Well, hey, friends, welcome back to the podcast. I'm excited to be in your earbuds this Saturday. Honestly, I wasn't going to record an episode for this Saturday, but I got inspired and motivated earlier in the day, just kind of based on some conversations I was having with clients as well as with some other therapists. And of course, I can't talk to you about those clients, but I can tell you about the other therapists. And I am part of a psych, I am part of a network. It's called the Psych Craft Network. And we are mainly, we're therapists who podcast. <laughs> we all have different shows. Uh, we all cover different topics, but we had a quick meeting today and just talking with them was super inspiring. If they're listening to, they know who they are. And I appreciate every single one of you guys. I'll put a link in the show notes. If you want to check out the SciCraft network and the other podcasters that are a part of this network, and, um, they share a lot of great information just for uh, people who want to level up their emotional health. It's not all just therapy topics. Um, and if you don't know who I am, this is your first time listening to me on Wednesdays, I release episodes that are geared towards other therapists or counselors. And then on Saturday, I like to release episodes that are aimed towards just anyone, mainly, mainly women, 40 plus who are looking to live their best lives. And when I say live their best lives, I mean, really be walking in alignment with their values and their beliefs and their priorities being congruent and their thoughts, feelings, and actions as well as who want to level up their mental and emotional health. And while I am a therapist, I am not your therapist. I heard that on another therapist podcast, and I thought that was a really cool way to just come out and tell you guys that the information that I share on my uh, podcast is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to diagnose, treat um, any of those things. And I do have an official disclaimer at the end of the podcast, but if you are needing therapy, then head to the show notes and you'll find some resources in there to get you started with finding a therapist. Because while I am a therapist, I am not your therapist. I just got a kick out of that. All right. So let's talk about tips or keys to staying motivated. And I know that staying motivated can be a complete and challenging. What am I trying to say? I know that staying motivated can be a challenge at times. But there are several keys or tips to help maintain your motivation. And I have waxed and waned with motivation over the years, as do most people. We don't always have the motivation to get all the things done that we want to get done. But I want to give you some tips on how to find your motivation, stay in motivation. And I'll give you some examples uh, from my life as well as from others as we go through. So the first tip is to set clear goals, clearly define what you want to achieve and set specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound or smart goals. That's what that acronym stands for smart, because having a clear target in mind gives you something to work towards to and helps you stay focused. And that could be anything that could be your physical health. That could be your emotional health. That can be your relationship. That can be career. I mean, really the sky is the limit when it comes to what type of goals that you want to set, but you want to make them as clear and define them as much as you can. Number two, when it comes to staying motivated, now that you have your goals, you want to break them down into smaller manageable tasks, because this way you can make progress step by step, which provides a sense of accomplishment and keeps you motivated, right? So let's say you are working towards finding a new job. If your big, large goal is to, if you have a specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound goal, like you want to you wanna find a new job in a certain field, and you want to make a certain amount of money, and you want to have it done by a certain date, then you're going to have to break that down into smaller goals. So what those smaller goals might look like, I mean, it really depends on you know where you are in your career, but definitely you're going to be looking at jobs. You're going to be researching careers. You're going to be looking at job positions online. You're going to be talking to other people. So break it down into smaller manageable tasks. So as you work towards those large goals, perhaps you're going to have, you know, goal number one, talk to somebody in the field that's doing the job that you would like to do and maybe have that set for in the next two weeks. Maybe another one is research five positions at a certain company, you know, really, really get specific as to what 
you can do to break down those larger goals because they can be overwhelming. And if you just have that one large goal looming in your future and you don't have, you know, a way to break it down, you can lose motivation, right? If you don't have a plan to get you there, you can lose motivation. Okay. Tip number three, find your why understand why you want to achieve your goals. Because when you identify your underlying motivations and the benefits you will gain from reaching your goals or objectives, you can have a strong drive to keep going even when faced with obstacles. So let me give you um, maybe an example on that one. So find your why. Hmm, What would be a good one? I'll just use a personal one. So when I was in my late twenties, I truly, truly desired a healthy relationship. I had been through so many relationships that I would not define as healthy. I have attachment issues from, you know, my childhood with uh, my father. So in my late twenties, I finally made a commitment to myself. I wanted to understand why I wanted this so badly. And I wanted a healthy relationship. Like I wanted it so badly that I went to therapy. I did all, I did so much work in therapy. I did so much work in learning how to communicate my wants and my needs. I did so much work in trying to repair a relationship that I had been in and I wanted to stay in. And I knew my why. My why ultimately was I really wanted a healthy relationship. I wanted to get married. I wanted to have, well, I didn't know at the time, but I thought maybe I wanted to have kids. My why was, That's what I wanted for my life. It was like a life goal. And so that's what kept me going. That was my motivation for working on myself. And I I said to myself, if, if it didn't work out with the relationship that I was in, that was okay. Like I came to peace with that, but I knew that it would only serve me in my future relationship or whoever that I met and, you know, developed a romantic relationship with. And I am, you know, hopefully eventually would marry. I knew that if I could keep that, why? I was doing it for myself. I was doing it for my future self, my future family. Then that was the motivation that I needed to continue to work on me. The next tip is visualizing success. So imagine yourself achieving your goals and visualizing the positive outcomes. You really want to create a mental image of your desired future in your head, like that mental image, because it can definitely increase your motivation and help you stay on track. You know, when I was pregnant, I visualized having a healthy baby. I visualized, you know, what my day was going to be like when I had my child. I visualized the things that I was going to do with her when she finally arrived. And I had a tendency to worry a lot about, you know, not being good enough, all that stuff as a mother. And I just kept visualizing success. And then I would tap into those feelings and I would say, what do good mothers do? How do good mothers show up for their children? And so I was visualizing success before it even happened. That's another example, I guess. The next tip is to surround yourself with support because you want to seek out people who support and encourage you. With uh, surrounding yourself with positive and motivating, motivated individuals can provide inspiration, accountability, and the necessary support when you face challenges. And I'm just going to give a shout out right now to my psych craft network of podcasters, because those people are amazing. They support, they encourage, they inspire. I mean, when I think about what am I doing with this, with my business and where's this going and what's going on with the podcast, I think about them. And if I need to, I'll send them a text. I'll connect with them. Um, ask for, you know, ask what's going on. And sometimes just asking them how I can support them is all I need because sometimes we have to get outside of ourselves to, um, to feel, to feel better about, you know, our, what we're doing and what, what's happening in our lives. So I like to ask people how I can support them as well. Okay. Next one is to celebrate progress, acknowledge and celebrate your achievements along the way, no matter how small recognizing your progress helps boost your confidence and maintains your enthusiasm. So y'all may not know this, but, and you wouldn't, if you're not listening to my Wednesday episodes, but I also create continuing education for therapists. And when I was applying to get my credential, to be able to um, provide continuing education. The day I got that letter, I hadn't even sold a course. I hadn't even marketed a thing, but when I got that letter saying that I was a, an approved provider, I celebrated. <laughs> and I celebrated the first time I sold a pod course, which is one of my continuing education courses. It was small. I couldn't necess- I couldn't take the, you know, the $10 bill and, and frame it, but I definitely was able to save the payment notification email that came over. So, you know, just the little things along the way, uh, as I'm working towards my goals, you've got to celebrate them. All right. 
Okay. Also stay organized. I can't, I can't like share this one enough. <laughs> Establish a system to stay organized and track your progress. And this could mean using a planner, a to-do list, uh, productivity apps, because when you have a clear plan and you can see your progress, you can check things off the list. You can, you know, cross the day off or cross that meal off or cross that workout off or whatever, it becomes easier to stay motivated because you're, you're, it's like you're getting all these notches in your belt and you're like, all right, I'm creating some momentum. So it's good to have a visual uh, image of the momentum that you are creating. Just a couple more, take care of yourself, maintain a healthy lifestyle by getting enough sleep, eating healthy food, engaging in great regular physical exercise because taking care of your physical and mental well-being provides you the energy and resilience needed to stay motivated. Sometimes when I'm feeling a little bit blah or unmotivated, I'll go for a walk, go for like a quick walk around the block, or I'll go out and um, go gra grab some weights and do a quick weightlifting session in my backyard. Um, definitely want to encourage you to get those eight hours of sleep, eat healthy foods, exercise, even if it's just walking, yoga, do the things that help you take care of your, your physical self. It's really important. I was just listening to an episode. I forget who it was. I listened to a lot of podcasts on my walk talking about um, alcohol and how, you know, uh, this is a whole other podcast, but how too much alcohol can definitely um, even, you know, I'm not saying that it, if you drink alcohol, you have a problem like addiction. I'm not saying that, but if you recognize that you're indulging a little bit more than you'd like, and it's affecting your health the next day or affecting your energy the next day, then I would suggest really taking a look at what that behavior is doing for you and maybe consider, you know, do some, a little bit of self-reflection on, is this, is this the best for, for you physically and mentally right now? Is this what you want to be doing um, as you're working towards, you know, goals and staying motivated? Okay, maybe that was a little bit of a side check, but I think it's important to point that out. The next tip is to embrace failure as learning. Understand that setbacks and failures are a natural part of the journey. So instead of getting discouraged, view them as opportunities to learn and grow. So adapt your approach, learn from your mistakes and keep moving forward. I have failed on so many things, <laughs> failed forward on so many things. In fact, I think I even have a podcast episode or two on that. I will put a link to those episodes in the show notes, but failure is a part of growth. You know, just going to come out and tell you, we're all going to fail at something at some point, and we can use it as an opportunity for growth and, and evolving as humans. So don't see it as a setback. Don't beat yourself up. What have you learned from this failure or setback and take the next step forward. Okay. Last but not least, Staying motivated requires you to stay inspired. And that means you can look to books and podcasts and videos, music, films, you know, connecting with other people um, who have achieved similar goals like you want to achieve. But those things, they can really up your vibe and up your energy. And exposing yourself to positive and motivating content can reignite your passion and keep you motivated. I kind of hope this podcast, Saturday podcast episodes, you know, they do that for you. They, they keep you positive. They keep you motivated. They keep you inspired and it helps you stay focused on your values, stay focused on your priorities, stay focused on the things that you want to accomplish and live your best life. So remember, you know, motivation, like I said at the beginning can wax and wane. It can fluctuate. That's normal, but it's essential to be patient with yourself and persevere through those challenging times. And by implementing these tips and strategies and finding what works best for you, you can maintain a higher level of motivation and achieve your goals because I believe in you and know that you have it in you to use these tips to stay motivated and reach your goals. So before I end this episode, I wanted to share that if you are experiencing any symptoms of anxiety and would like a free course on how to transform your relationship with anxiety, I have a great recommendation and I've actually been through this course myself. Just go ahead and click the link in the show notes to get access to the mindfulness apps course, transforming your relationship with anxiety with Shamash Aladini, the international best-selling author of mindfulness for dummies and the mindful way through stress. You'll get access for three days and you get trainings, micro practices, and guided meditation. It's my app of choice for daily meditations, as well as sleep meditations, mindfulness practice trainings, and much, much more. So see the link in the show notes to get started. So here is my 
long disclaimer. It's important to stress that these episodes are not meant to take the place of any work you're doing with your therapist or doctor. In fact, please run these ideas by your counselor or doctor before you act on them to make sure you are ready for them or even a fit for the suggestions. I can't stress this enough that each person is unique and their situation is unique. So please talk to your doctor before starting anything new I might be suggesting. And the therapy show with Lisa Mustard and the information provided by me is solely intended for informational and entertainment purposes and is not a substitute for advice, diagnosis, or treatment regarding medical or mental health conditions. Although I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, the views expressed on the site or any related content should not be taken for medical or psychiatric advice. Always consult your physician before making any decisions related to your physical or mental health. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit lisamustard.com to access the show notes and discover more fantastic content. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank Thank you. you.